Hi everyone. Good evening. Someone is asking how long it will take to start the class. It has started already. I'm here, guys. Insa Noor is asking how we have started. We were just waiting for some people. Okay, so everyone has now joined. Whoever wanted to join. So, guys, let's start. Okay, so good evening again, everyone, and thank you for joining. And this is the second part of the pharmacotherapy masterclass, which is, uh, you know, we have started on the 2nd of the May, and first class was on Neffeld, right? Non alcoholic liver disease. And uh, that was taken by Dr. Sipta. It's an amazing class, I must say. And today's class, I'm going to take the second part of that master class is today. That's on myocardial infarction, full understanding. So we'll be trying uh, to cover everything. Okay, everything means everything about the basics of ISD, uh, ACS, types of angina, and the case. So everything will be going through the case and the signs, symptoms, risk factors. I mean, everything will be covering. Okay, I usually take, uh, you know, uh, one very, uh, my favorite case, if I say one of the uh, females case I used to take, but today I have taken another case. I mean, definitely MI cases are similar, but today I have taken one very real time case to, uh, you know, discuss with you guys. This, this case is amazing and I need your full cooperation. Let me open your mics. If you can handle it, you have to handle it because only the person who is speaking will open the mics. Okay. Only the person who is speaking will open the mics. Otherwise, no one else is allowed to open the mics. And just allow me for a second, guys. Let me start my, uh, I mean, YouTube is there. So let me, uh, you know, start YouTube in uh, my your mobile. One second. Yes. Okay, so I have started the YouTube in my other device. So I can see your comments on the, uh, sorry, YouTube also. The people who are uh, joining us on the YouTube, I can see their comments on the uh, YouTube also. Okay, so. Your mic, everyone. Do not disturb in between. Mute intentionally or in unintentionally. If you are opening your mics, that will not be good for the class. Right? Will be disturbed. Okay, guys. So let's start. Let's not wait much. So we are going to start the myocardial infarction case, but I need your full support in this else as well. So uh, yes, this session is prepared for the educational purpose using a real time case with the full anonymity of the patient information. Today's class, you know, in the today's class, I'll be, uh, you know, talking about these, all the things, these, all the things, whatever we are, uh, you know, uh, keeping in the slide, as you can see here, uh, case presentation, diagnosis, learning points, treatment algorithms, and guidelines directed medical therapy to the case, then prescription audit also we will do. I'll ask you what are the prescription related problems and then discharge plans for the patient and then the patient counseling. So everything, almost everything we are going to cover. So guys, let's start. Let's understand. Today, I brought a very young case for all of you. Very young case. Guys, focus on this case. Okay. I need all your attentions here. Okay. All your attentions. I want all of you to please okay you can answer in the chat box so i don't want you to speak it's okay otherwise uh, you know many of you will be disturbing right so because unintentionally you open your mics yes so i want your participation still i want your participation in the chat box okay guys so let's start there's a case of a very young man 39 year old young man okay 39-year-old young man who presented to the emergency room with 8 to 10 substernal chest pain and pressure radiating to the left back. Left back. Okay. That has been occurring for last 9 hours. Okay. Last 9 hours. His cousin. Guys, every sentence is relatable here. His cousin died at the age of 46 years 
due to the myocardial infarction after one year of angioplasty to LAD. Means his cousin got MI at the age of 45 years. Okay. Now he is on lipid lowering agents and bisoprolol for past eight months. You understood the case? Very simple case. Let's make it complicated. A 39 year old man presents to the emergency room with the left side chest pain and pressure radiating to the left back that has been occurring for last nine hours, right? His cousin died at the age of 46 due to MI after one year of angioplasty. Okay, after one year of angioplasty. So guys, tell me how these things are relevant. Why these things are relevant to understand and relevant to know. Please tell me guys. Yes. Anyone? Why these things are relevant to know. Yes. Family history. Wonderful. That is the family history. Yes. That is the family history. Yes. Family history is very important to know. So, yes. So, he has the immediate cousin. Let's understand one more important thing here. We can discuss here itself. His cousin. His cousin means his paternal relative. Okay. Paternal relative. Paternal relative means his grandfather's, maybe his grandfather had the same symptoms or same problem or grandmother. From their side, it had come to the son, any of his father or, you know, his uncle or, you know, auntie, aunt, anyone. And then it went to the cousin, right? And similar problems he is having right now. So this is the blood relation. Cousin is a blood relation. Okay, so immediate blood relation. So immediate blood relation family history is very important to consider. Okay, in majority of the things, especially in the cardiovascular problems. Understand? Now he is on the lipid lowering agents and bisoprolol for past eight months. So bisoprolol is what, guys? Yes, I'm looking for the comments. Bisoprolol. Beta blocker. Why we are giving the beta blocker? Why we are giving the beta blocker? Hypertension. Absolutely. So this guy, this guy and why we are giving lipid lowering agents? Because he is hyperlipidemia as well. Hyperlipidemia and hypertensive. Right? Hyperlipidemia positive, hypertension positive, family history positive. Family history positive for what? MI, right? For MI. The family history is also positive. Perfectly fine. Now, let's understand some more things about him. His weight 70 kg. His height 167 cm. BMI is 25.1 kg meter square. Normal. We can consider it normal. Like, you know, usually... Uh, 21 to 25 is normal. Uh, nowadays, it has considered to be 24.5, but it's okay. I mean, it's just at the upper limit of the normal BMI. Upper limit of the normal BMI. Blood, I mean, his temperature was normal, but look at his blood pressure. His blood pressure was 168 by 94. Heart rate, 100. Respiratory rate, normal. No neurological symptoms were there. And pickle, P was present. What is P, guys? And what is pickle? What is this pickle? Can you tell me? What is this pickle? Yes, to reduce the hypertension and promote blood pressure dilation. Okay, blood vessel dilation. Paler. What is the entire? What is the entire pickle? Physical examination. Paler. Ictrus. Sinus. Then. Then. Paler. Ictrus. Sinus. And. Okay, sinuses and what else? clubbing and lymphedema then lymphedema then edema l4 l4 what l4 what guys lymphadenopathy yes lymphadenopathy okay so his pallor was there so what the pallor indicated here what the pallor exactly indicates here guys tell me 
what the paler indicates exactly here p pale color of skin that means paler but what is that it can indicate to the low hemoglobin low rbc is actually low rbc is in the body low hemoglobin and what is that called as anemia okay it can lead to anemia so these are the normal signs and symptoms and everything about the patient now if you look at certain more things guys look at this his serum creatinine was 1.3 his tc ldl 236 hdl 45 tg 386 hbmc 7.9 ckmb 25 Trop T 0.88, antiprobin P 1090 pg per ml. What else do you understand here? Like, what by the blood investigations? What else do you understand here with this person, with this patient? What do you understand, guys? By the blood, uh, you know, investigation. Tell me. First, creatinine. Is it normal or not normal? Is it normal or not normal, guys? Yes. Yes, normal. One point three is normal. Okay, it's at higher side. What is the normal limit then? What is the normal limit then? It's borderline. What is the normal limit then? Till nine point nine, is it? Is it, guys? Point till point nine or what? Okay, till point nine. Are you sure? Yes, the creatinine levels are normal. Creatinine levels are what? Normal creatinine levels are point. Sorry, uh, let's go over point zero eight, uh, point zero six to one point two, point zero six to point one point two mg per dl. Okay, what is TC? Very high. LDL very high. HDL very high. TZ very high. So, what is the normal limit of two things? LDL and TZ, guys, tell me. LDL, what's the normal limit of LDL? BNP level increases. Okay, yes, increased. Understand. Ninety to one thirty six for LDL. Oh, Mehrun Shah, no. It should be less than hundred. Okay, LDL must be less than hundred mg per dl. Then what about the TZ, total glycerides? Total glycerides, seventy-two, one sixty, less than one fifty. Usually less than one fifty. TC, two hundred. Okay, so we can say that his triglycerides and LDL were two way higher than the normal. HbA1c seven point nine. So even the patient was having the high HbA1c. Now let's come to the cardiac biomarkers. Let's come to the cardiac biomarkers. Can you tell me what's high there in the cardiac biomarker? CK high or not? CKMB high or not? CKMB. Let's talk about CKMB. CKMB high or not? What should be the normal level of CK? Normal level of CK, guys. Yes, normal level of CK up to twenty four, less than five. Okay, four to two hundred. Okay, less than five. Hmm, you all are watching at Google. Yes, I'm so sorry. Yes, okay, fine. See, usually CK must be less than two hundred, and CKMB must be less than twenty five. So it is normal, almost normal borderline. Okay, it is borderline. CKMB is borderline. What is trop T? Troponin T, guys. Is it high or not? Troponin T. Yes, guys. Troponin T. Troponin T. Yes. How much it should be? How much it should be? Troponin T. Yes. Troponin T raised HbA1c, okay, raised LDL, TZ, increased BNP, raised CK, troponin T raised. What is the normal level of troponin T, guys? What is the normal level of troponin T? 
less than 0.2 somebody is selling less than 0.4 less than 0.5 what is this guys akila is telling it's negative really are you guys sure no troponin t is always in nanogram per ml units are perfectly fine see tell me about troponin t if it is high or not and what is the normal level Ooh. guys nothing can be done with you so usually guys listen carefully why this master class is usually troponin must be the guideline says troponin must be up to 0.01 okay 0.01 or lesser normally okay but clinically we consider clinically we consider up to 0.1 if it is up to 0.1 that we consider normally maybe some normal injuries has happened in the body and that has raised to 0.0 i mean 0.1 0.1 ng per ml okay now it is 0.88 uh, ng per ml it is way higher than the normal it directly indicates the infarction it directly indicates the infarction okay infarction has happened injury has happened in the vessel so it is very very high it is very very high okay yes and anti probin p now tell me anti probin p why it is high or not and if it is high then what should be the normal level and what it indicates yes guys anti probin p what it indicates it is high 100 pg per ml normal is it no normal level of the anti probin p's are less than 150 okay less than 150 pg per ml it's a c i'll tell you guys i'll tell you here anti probin p NP pro bnp is the official biomarker to check the heart failure okay to check the heart failure right if it is there any heart failure or not right so guys now let me tell you very specific things about anti pro bnp normal ranges of anti pro bnp is less than 150 pg per ml okay less than 150 pg per ml but in case in certain cases okay in certain cases the value is different okay like if the chronic if it is acute heart failure this see this is if it is more than 150 in chronic heart failure it can be considered uh, sorry in acute heart failure guys i'm sorry acute heart failure now listen carefully about anti p in acute heart failure more than 150 is considered abnormal in chronic heart failure more than 3 300 pg per ml is considered is considered uh, you know in chronic heart failure more than 300 pg per ml is considered abnormal okay guys and then in older patients older means older than 75 years and the people who have high creatinine or we can say the chronic kidney disease ckd in both the cases it is considered to be 900 pg per ml okay 900 pg per ml the normal level is less than 900 so upper limit is 900 here more than 900 pg per ml will be considered abnormal in cases of ckds in cases of ckds and in cases of the elderly people who are more than 75 years okay more than 75 years and this is what i'm talking about according to european society of cardiology guidelines okay european society of cardiology guidelines there are multiple cardiology guidelines there are multiple cardiology guidelines and those guidelines are like one is acc aha what is acc aha american college of cardiology and american heart association then new york heart association guidelines are there then there are you know uh international you know i international society of hypertension ish guidelines are there then you know uh, uh we have our uh, esc guidelines european society of cardiology guidelines are there canadian society guidelines are there multiple guidelines are there but what i'm quoting is european society of cardiology which is widely used which is widely used uh you know worldwide right so standard we can take these things i take a standard from the european society of cardiology i
started from the European cardio, European, uh, you know, Society of Cardiology, right? So now antiprobin P is definitely high here. Okay, it is an indicator of heart failure, right? Understand? Correct. No worries. Now, if I come to the next part, what should I done? ECG, right? To check these symptoms, I should do ECG, correct? So if I look at the ECG, what ECG shows? ECG shows sinus rhythm with small Q waves in lead 3 and AVF. Sinus rhythm with small Q waves in lead 3 and AVF. Lead 3 is what? This is lead 3. Sinus Q wave is where? Sinus, sinus Q wave is where? PQ here. Look at the sinus Q wave. PQRS, right? Q wave. So here, a small Q wave is there. Otherwise, Q wave is usually here. If you look at the second, Q wave is very big. But here, Q wave is very small. Okay. Q wave in the, you know, lead 3 is almost invisible. Okay. Very small Q wave in lead 3 and AVF also. There is almost a new, no Q wave, very small Q wave, okay? And then if you look at the major part here, if you look at the major part here, guys, I'll tell you everything. T wave inversion in lead 2, 3, AVF, ST depression in P5, P6. First, let's see ST depression. What is ST? Let, I'll tell you the ST. So this is, uh, I mean, let's, this is the P, P, Q, R, I mean, I'll write big, big Q, R, S. And then this is T, right? This is P, Q, R, S, T. This is the wave, right? I mean, that's how the wave looks like, right? I mean, like this. Like this, like, I mean, this is the P wave, Q, R, S, T, right? So, when we are talking about S, T depression, means the entire, this part will be going down. Okay, we'll be going down. Look at the 5 and 6. V5. Entire ST is going down. Okay. Entire ST usually in the lateral, uh, you know, leads. V5 and V6. See? And V6. Look at this. ST is depressed. SD inversion. We call it SD inversion or ST depression. Okay. T inversion. Not ST inversion, but T inversion. T is inverted. T is going down. T is downward. Understand this. ECG. You know, this is a very simple for the MI cases, like basic, you can understand by this. Basic, you can understand by this, right? ST, uh, if it is saying ST depression, that means ST from S to T, the entire segment will be going down. If it is showing ST elevation, then this entire segment will be going like this. Okay, ST up, you know, upward. ST will be upward. That is called as ST elevation. ST elevation and non-ST elevation, there are the different, different, you know, myocardial infarctions. There are different, different ACS, acute coronary, uh, you know, uh, acute coronary problems, acute coronary diseases, right? Or acute coronary syndrome, we call it ACS, right? So there are different things. So if it is ST depression in V5 and V6, it is the indicator of MI. Even the elevation will be the indicator of MI and different types of MI, I'll tell you. Like if it is depressed, or if it is elevated, what will happen? Even if you look at the inversions now, T wave inversion, again, T wave inversion is second, third, and AVF. See, T wave usually is up, right? Here, if you see in first, T wave is inverted, you know, T wave is normal upside. But look at the, look at in the two, lead two, T wave is inverted. Okay, even in the AVF, T wave is inverted. This is the direct sign of, direct sign of, you know, myocardial infarction, myocardial infarction. What, that's why I'm telling what does these leads represent? I'm saying the same thing. Um, I, I mean, I don't have the time to uh, teach you the entire ECG right now from the basics, but I have taken multiple classes on ECGs, like what lead represents what, right? Now I'm telling you a little more, little, little more about that. You know, there are, this is a 12 lead ECG, lead one, lead two, lead three, lead four, I mean, lead three and then three are AVR, like anterior leads, then V1, V2, posterior leads, usually, you know, and then V1, uh, I mean, not exactly the posterior leads, but the thoracic leads. These six are the thoracic leads, okay? V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, okay? These are the thoracic leads and these collect all the impulses from your chest, impulses from your chest, okay? Now, what exactly happens is, if T wave inversion is present in only one wave, is it still considered an MI? Absolutely. If it is how much depressed or how much inverted it is. 
okay if it is inverted in v6 only definitely it is mi the location of mi will be different either it is anterior wall mi posterior wall mi or uh, uh, you know like lateral mi lateral wall mi so the change of location in the heart will be different okay i mean there will be change in location of the myocardial infarction in the heart okay so the thing here is let's understand like this is not the normal here t is inverted okay t is inverted t inversion is there in uh, lead 2 lead 3 and avf and st depression entire st segment is you know uh, is going down in lead 5 and lead 6 so it shows the myocardial infarction which myocardial infarction guys let me tell you let me uh, describe you in the next slide how you can differentiate okay how you can differentiate right so let's see first of all the question for all of you is what based on these investigations based on the family history and everything whatever the case you have studied till now what is your provisional diagnosis what is your provisional diagnosis and STEMI, non st elevation mi okay and STEMI, okay and STEMI, and STEMI. tell me the entire provisional diagnosis yes guys tell me the entire provisional diagnosis and STEMI, okay then what else hyperlipidemia then hypertension okay hypertension diabetes okay so let's understand cva who is writing cva dyslipidemia is there hypertension is there acute coronary syndrome is there yes acute coronary syndrome is there okay acute coronary syndrome is there other discrepancies to keep in mind first raised creatinine low hemoglobin and pallor for further evaluation and what we have missed here what we have missed here guys why cva why is why cva how it can be cva come on how it can be cva not at all acs yes so we have missed here guys keep it in mind we have missed here diabetes newly diagnosed newly diagnosed okay he was not on diabetic medications he was not diabetes but we have newly diagnosed diabetes okay we have newly diagnosed diabetes pulmonary embolism how could be the pulmonary embolism what leads you to the pulmonary embolism of knee please tell me what are your perspectives to diagnose the pulmonary embolism yes how it could be pulmonary embolism i want to know that yes new onset diabetes nausea yes perfectly fine okay Sir, from what they concluded, acute coronary syndrome. Acute coronary syndrome, what they have concluded. Okay, who will tell me what are the, you know, parameters we need to go for the acute coronary syndrome. In this patient especially, who will tell me? Acute coronary syndrome. Yes, guys? BNP? Oh, uh, no okay so let me tell you first thing is first thing is acute symptoms acute symptoms chest pain plus radiating plus radiating sweat plus radiating uh you know pain to the left back left back okay acute chest pain acute coronary syndrome I'm telling you acute symptoms then very high creatinine levels 0.88 okay then third thing is what what is the third thing guys ecg changes ecg changes okay ecg changes are not evolved mi okay evolved mi can someone define me evolved mi what is evolved mi evolved mi in ECG, how do we check the evolved MI? Can someone check? Can someone check, tell me? Yes. Evolved MI. See, guys, I'll tell you. If there are, if there are more than 
टेन मिली सेकेंड डिप्रेशन इन दर यू नो टी इनवर्जन इज मोर देन टेन टू ट्वेल्व मिली सेकेंड दैट इज कंसिडर्ड एज एक्यूट चेंजेस ओके दैट इज चेंज दैट इज कंसिडर्ड एज एक्यूट चेंज इवॉल्ड एम आई मीन्स इफ द समन इज हैविंग द हार्ट अटैक और माओकार्डियल इंफ्रक्शन way back like a year back 6 months back or 2 years back and if you check the person's ecg today person is doing good and if you just normally check the ecg the ecg will come almost normal only some variables will be changed okay those variables will be changed just from the 5 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds that is the range okay so we call it evolved mi like this mi is old not the new mi okay in this case the st dispersion depression and the t inversions were way higher new okay it were it was acute it was acute based on ecg based on troponin t which is also considered to be like only after 2 hours of myocardial infarction it raises okay so it was not raised it, it cannot be raised in the you know chronic mi it raises in the acute mi only okay and the acute symptoms these all things make the mi acute mi or acute coronary syndrome acute coronary syndrome means the acute myocardial infarction okay where is the first ecg arun there i showed only one ecg there is no there are no two ecgs at all i showed only one ecg here what man what are you saying ah guys come on so the this is a new mi this is the new myocardial infarction see this patient is also having the i mean this patient is new mi right he did not have any history of myocardial infarction before okay so done guys now ihd what is ihd so isd is nothing but the ischemic heart disease as you can see this is the normal heart these are the normal coronary arteries this is rca this is rca this is lmca okay lmca okay so what is lmca guys what what is lmca can tell someone tell me what is lmca and what is rca sir means the patient is admitted and on regular continuous monitoring it is normal might be normal we don't know left middle carotid artery arun you are not answering now carotid is the neck carotid means the arteries which are connecting the heart to the brain okay that is carotid if i am talking about heart that means the coronary artery arun that is the coronary artery buddy so yes so rca is right coronary artery and lmca is left main coronary artery left main coronary artery so from the heart this is the right side heart okay the coronary artery which is bringing the blood to the right side of the heart this is the left side of the heart and this artery is bringing the blood to the left side of the heart bringing the blood means what bringing the oxygenated blood for the with the nutrients to the left side wall of the heart to get the nutrients okay that is the lmca now this you know divides into many arteries this main artery after divide this is the divide right after divide the main artery which is coming to the frontal part is called lad lad and the you know this is also divided into multiple parts like you know uh, diagonal and all you know d1 you know d2 diagonal 1 diagonal these are diagonal arteries okay diagonal coronary arteries diagonal 1 diagonal 2 and this which is just the first major artery from the lad is known as lcx what is that what is that guys that is lcx left circumferential artery which covers the circumference of the left heart apex exactly okay it covers the apex part of the left heart right so that is called as lcx artery this is also one of the major artery lex left circumferential artery okay and lad is what guys lad why is i have written lad left coronary artery left coronary artery literally what is a in left coronary artery what is left coronary artery what is a in left coronary yes yes somebody has seen ambika has seen left anterior descending artery left 
anterior descending artery anterior descending artery means from to the anterior side it is coming to the anterior side of the heart left side and providing the blood to that part okay so left side is one of the major part i mean definitely the right side also but left side has multiple branches of lmca okay multiple branches of left main ca left main coronary artery so from here to here it is called lmca and then it is divided into lcx and lad okay i mean it is uh, it is into the leds right and led also is like into lcx and diagonal 1 diagonal 2 multiple different parts understand so these are the arteries now i'll come to the ihd i mean it was just a little anatomy about the coronary arteries now i'll tell you what is exactly the ihd like see this is a normal coronary artery where blood flow is 100 percent this is the circumference of this is the circumference of coronary artery and blood flow is 100 percent okay now you look at this look at this this is what this is the plaque this is the plaque okay this is the plaque like what plaque means there has been the injury and because of injury the lot of particles lot of foreign material lot of fat particles calcium rbcs and uh, tlcs and lot of things you know platelets all aggregated here and they have covered most of the circumference of the artery and it is almost block so here we can say it is 10 to 20 percent open only so the blood flow which must be 100 percent now blood flow is 10 to 20 percent so the demand of the oxygen is similar demand of the blood is similar but the supply has remaining only 10 to 20 percent that is called ihd ischemic heart disease ischemic heart disease and guys heart attack is this okay heart attack is mi or ACS or CAD, okay, these all are the form of our, you know, heart attack. If many people ask me, many times they ask me, sir, what's the difference between heart failure and, you know, heart attack? Heart failure and heart attack are the completely different entities. Cardiac arrest is also related to MI, but cardiac arrest is also different. Okay, so there are multiple entities, multiple diseases in the cardiac. Uh, we know scenarios when we talk about heart. So heart failure is the reduced pumping capacity of the heart. Okay, reduced pumping capacity of the heart. And heart attack is the heart attack is what? Heart attack is the infarction and blockage in coronary arteries. Okay, so that's the difference, right? Not narrowing blockage. Narrowing is different part. I mean, narrowing could be there, but it is like blocking the artery okay so that is ischemic heart field i mean ischemic heart disease now let's understand let me tell you the simple terms in the ecg what are the different types of ecg you will see see this is the normal ecg okay this is the normal ecg and you will see this is the normal p wave this is q this is r this is s this is t okay this is p this is q this is r this is s this is t and this is like you know uh, what we say qt you know from like from here like there are segments from here to here this is pr segment like pr segment right segments okay from here to here pr segment from s to t is called as st segment st segment okay and q2 we always talk about q q to t na from q to t sorry from q to t that is called as qt prolongation qt okay there is a duration duration means the milliseconds always we you know we measure this line in the milliseconds we don't measure in the centimeters or millimeters we always you know measure this line in the milliseconds so there are the timing there is a duration of qt usually there are some drugs which enhance this qt pro i mean prolong this qt and this goes very high which longer right so this is like repolarization and depolarization thing that i cannot uh, you know tell you right now it was a big thing otherwise it will go to the physiology but uh, you just understand the normal part p q r s t and this is st segment okay this is st segment from s to t it is normal it is normal means like it is matching the baseline it is matching the baseline it is touching the baseline both the side and it's not elevated or something now look at this the second part anastomy 
you know you know an stemi here the major thing is st depression okay major thing is st depression okay major thing is st depression i'll tell you the comparison also wait let me tell you the comparison also see this is and this is stemi st elevated or st elevation uh elevation myocardial infarction and this is non st elevation okay non st elevation myocardial infarction what is the difference see st elevation it will be the st will be elevated see look at this again p q r s t st must be following the baseline but here it is elevated here it is upward look at this the entire st segment is going upward it is elevated so this kind of myocardial infarction is known as st elevated myocardial infarction and why this is non stemi why this is not a non st elevation because there is no st elevation but there is a st depression look at this st you know s is here t is here so s must be following this st must be following this but here st is depressed st is going downward understand so that is not elevation this is non elevation this is non st elevation mi you understand that so this is non st elevation mi and the another version of an stemi is t inversion t just t is going down just t is inverted that is also no st elevation so this is also an stemi either t inversion will be there or st depression will be there understand either st depression will be there or t inversion will be there that's called as an stemi and stemi you can easily understand through the ecg you can understand easily through the ecg okay guys you can easily different cad's coronary artery disease and acute coronary uh, syndrome okay acute coronary syndrome so how we can differentiate so there are four types one is stable angina one is unstable angina one is anastomy one is stemi so stemi and anastomy we just understood right in the last slide also i'll tell here also but look at the stable angina this is one of the most basic heart attack okay this is one of the most basic heart attack like here ischemia has happened ischemia has happened ischemia is what ischemia means when there is a less supply of the oxygen and high demand of the oxygen is there from the any part of the heart like so supply has gone down uh, you know against the demand supply has gone down against the demand here so see blockage is there okay blockage is there but that is not because of the infarction that is not because of the injury you understand that guys main focus here again i mean in this the blockage is there but due to accumulation of the foreign particles platelets multiple things i'll come to that i'll come to that but here no infarction infarct means injury infarct infarct means injury so no injury is there this part has been accumulated naturally from the fat calcium or it has collected multiple other things this is there but there is no infarct right so anginal pain is there when there is increased demand in setting of stable atherosclerotic plaque set stable atherosclerotic plaque means this is the this is only at this place this is only at this place this has been accumulated okay things have been accumulated here the the cholesterol has been accumulated here okay cholesterol have been uh, accumulated here with the other parts with the other elements like calcium and all but this is not injury right so this is stable the part of the plaque is stable <clears throat> that's why we call it stable angina and the major part here is the supply has come down definitely supply has come down but the thing is but the thing is like symptomatically if i tell you in case of in case of stable angina if the person is working 
and he gets chest pain okay person is working like daily walking whatever is working like exercising person will get the chest pain why he is getting the chest pain because when he is exerting into the exercise or running he will get the chest pain because the oxygen supply is not meeting the demand here that's why he is getting the chest pain okay so but that will be reduced or alleviated completely completely over when the person is taking rest when the person is taking rest okay with rest it goes down it goes completely it goes away okay with rest it goes away so that is stable angina in stable angina your ecg will be perfectly normal because there will be no impulses changes as there is no infarct there is no infarct so no impulses changes ecg will be perfectly normal troponins will be normal as there is no injury right there is no injury so even troponins will be normal right so if the troponin is normal if the ecg is normal then how we would check the stable angina that is my next question can someone tell me sir so pain start after there is more settling of the pain no pain start when the oxygen demands comes down okay i mean oxygen demands is very high but supply comes down because of the block block cause because of the blockage in the because of the blockage in the artery so you are telling sir so pain starts after there is more settling of the plaque yes plaque definitely can we check it by lipid levels not at all radiating pain uh, it is a symptom but you have no ecg changes no troponin t how what else guys treadmill test yes you will go for you will go for stress test we call them stress test okay we call them stress test stress tests are one is stress echo stress echo and second is treadmill test treadmill test okay so during the stress echo and treadmill test ecg changes okay ecg changes right in the treadmill when we make the person run and you know on the elevations different elevations when we make the person run the ecg changes and that time you know you will get the you will get the correct idea of stable angina if it goes okay suppose guys if troponin if sorry if treadmill test <clears throat> if treadmill test is positive what next if treadmill test is positive what next coronary calcium score how do we do the coronary calcium score yes how do we do the coronary calcium score oh yes guys chaitanya how do we do the coronary calcium score in coronary ct in ct okay ct angiogram you are talking about right most probably okay so usually what is the next further testing here guys further testing i'll tell you i'm so sorry i think uh, that was not the way what we were looking for okay so so here let me tell you so here we either go for coronary angiogram or ct angiogram okay ct angiogram okay ct angiogram or coronary angiogram that gives us the complete package of the arteries complete view of the arteries okay now comes to the unstable angina unstable angina is the little modified version where there was a plaque but now injury has happened and that plaque has been ruptured the plaque plaque has been ruptured and become thrombus thrombus okay thrombus is what guys thrombus is something which can you know which can travel from one place to another through the artery and it can cause some more problems in deep veins deep vein thrombosis you have heard of deep vein thrombosis in the legs in the arms and many where it happens in the body so deep vein thrombosis sometimes happen because of the heart attacks also because when your plaque is busted out because of the injury infarction has happened a little infarction has happened the plaque is ruptured plaque is ruptured because of the injury 
so it becomes the terrible thing to the person and it usually you know causes the pain and it usually shows some kind of changes even in the ecgs like sometimes ecg will be normal sometimes there will be inverted t wave sometimes there will be st depression troponins will be normal troponins will be normal in such cases troponins will be normal in such cases okay unstable angina usually unstable anginas will not come down the pain of unstable angina will not come down with the rest okay it will not come down with the rest okay now the thing is one more very important lesson for all of you here is you must not go for stress test in such cases otherwise patient will collapse or die okay because he is already having the infarct he is already having the thrombus which is moving so you should not go for stress test in such cases at all stress case is recommended stress test is recommended only in stable angina not in unstable angina okay then the third thing here is anastomy i told you anastomy is again like plaque rupture and acute elevation in the troponin t acute elevation in the inverted uh, i mean acute elevation in the ecgs and there is like sub endocardial uh, infarction there has, there has been you know the uh, infarction has happened already right in the stomy and anastomy and you will see the changes either st waves inverted or i mean the t wave inversion st depression you will see in the anastomy and st elevation t wave uh, hyperacute you know hyperacute uh, t wave you will see the so you will see such elevations in stomy and you will see that either it is usually the there are 90 to 100% plaques you know 80 to 100% plaques we can see usually in cases of you know anastomy and stomy definitely it will not be you know helping out with the rest or with something there will be always the pain okay there will be always the pain right guys and now let me tell you these three things are considered as acs unstable angina stomy and anastomy these all three are considered as acs acute coronary syndrome and everything all four have been considered as coronary artery disease okay what's the difference between coronary artery disease and acs is acs is acute conditions so unstable angina stomy and anastomy you know stomy and anastomy these three comes under the acute coronary syndrome and all acute coronary syndrome and stable angina everything makes the coronary artery disease and infarction what is ihd isd is again you know ischemic heart disease ischemia is always there okay so coronary artery disease or ischemic heart disease are the similar terms okay are terms for the same thing you understand that ischemic heart disease or coronary artery disease these two terms are synonym to each other these two terms are synonym to each other okay <clears throat> got it in unstable angina biomarkers are usually not uh, uh, not elevated okay now <clears throat> we have done here the basics part this is there are three important you know learnings again you know uh, i think there is a lot of time but still we, we can cover it right one second one sec we cover it 57 right so we can cover it yes we have a lot of time yes we, it's two hours anyways so see <clears throat> how exactly the plaque or thrombus you know created or developed first of all this is the coronary artery wall this is the coronary artery this is the coronary artery this is one side of coronary artery dissected to check what exactly happens inside okay so look at this here the injury has happened in the coronary artery wall okay injury has happened injury okay injury or you will say now what why the injury and how the injury has happened inside the coronary artery how the injury has happened inside the coronary artery why not i'll say why not it cannot happen why it cannot happen see maybe because of the foreign particles poisonous particles high density calciums high density fat or lipid lipid particles can just scratch the wall okay high density calcium high density lipids or the foreign particles toxic substance these just scratch the wall that is injury 
and sometimes because of some procedures accidental you know blunt injuries or maybe you know there are a lot of things if you are putting some catheters to some other checkup or some other procedure that also can get the injury inside okay that also can get the injuries inside severe blows not usually no 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 severe blows no okay so injuries can happen inside due to multiple things and how it is made now thrombus so first thing what happen is when the injury happens there are some elements which are secreted okay there are some elements which are secreted so in these elements what are these one is see if you look at this brown a small ball that is called as von Willebrand factor. Okay, von Willebrand factor, VWF here, here, von Willebrand factor, then collagen, then these small blue balls are collagen. Okay, these small blue balls are collagen. Okay, now the process exactly start. The first, first process is platelet addition. First, let me tell you what is platelet. See, platelet is again the part of blood, right? But the platelet surface, the platelet surface has millions of receptors, okay, millions of receptors on the platelet surface. Platelet surface is not plain, okay, so there are millions of the receptors and those receptors are what? Those receptors are von Willebrand factor receptor, collagen receptor, GP2B, glycoprotein 2B, 3A receptors and there are multiple types of receptors, okay. So when the injury happens here, from this, there are multiple secretions, right? One is von Willebrand factor, one is collagen, and GP2B, uh, you know, lipids are there, glycoproteins are there. So what happens is they attract the platelets. They attract the platelets and they attach to the platelet. Okay, these attach to the platelet and platelet attaches to the wall here. Platelet attaches to the injury here to cover it because that is the platelets nature platelets always cover the injury and they you know cover the wound and they you know heal the wound right so these will one will plant factor and collagen and like glycoproteins they attract the platelets and platelets comes and aggregate here now what happens is once the platelets are aggregated they will call more more platelets okay that is called as platelet activation okay platelets are activated here and they are calling more platelets and that is called as platelet aggregation. More platelets will come here and along with platelets, multiple other foreign particles which are moving from their calcium and you know, all toxins, all other part, whatever dead RBCs, whatever is going through, they will come to this and they will be sticking here. They will be sticking here with these platelets. Okay, now the second part starts is what? What? Here, what is this part called as? What is this part called as? Can someone tell me this name of this part, guys? What is this part called as? Clotting factors, clotting cascade. Have you understand? Clotting, coagulation cascade. That is called as coagulation cascade. Okay, that is called as coagulation cascade. So, along with von Willebrand factors, okay, and the collagens and glycoproteins there are multiple other things which are secreted like first is factor 7 factor tissue factors and factor ix factor 9 right so what happens is these tissue factors are converted into the tissue factor 8 tissue factor sorry tissue factor 7 okay and these tissue factor 7s tissue factor 7 and activated tissue factor 9 this tissue factor 7 activates the tissue factor uh, 9 and this factor 9 is converted into 9a okay factor 9a now this tissue factor 7 and tissue factor 9a these both activates the factor x okay these both factor 10 factor x these both activates the factor x factor x converted into factor xa i mean x a is activated x okay activated factor x and this activated factor x is converting thrombo uh, you know converting prothrombin which is available in the blood to the thrombin okay prothrombin to thrombin and this thrombin is converting fibrinogen into fibrin fibrin is a mass okay this mass is going to the aggregated platelets here and making a full fledged planes full, full fledged plaque hard plaque which is not movable right now which is not movable right now and blocking the way 
inside blocking the way inside the coronary artery blocking the way inside the coronary artery understand guys intrinsic and extrinsic pathways are there definitely we are not going to the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway i'm just telling you the overview so that's how the plaque has been made here that's how the plaque has been made here right this is the final plaque that has been made like this so the major processes are platelet addition first then platelet activation then platelet aggregation and then because of the fibrin thrombus creation thrombus development okay now okay understood guys till here now for the tests were done for the tests were done so echocardiogram was done so regional ball motion abnormalities it was showing echocardiogram echocardiogram this is not the angio uh, this is not the angio or this is not something like called electrocardiogram this is not easy this is echo we have done echo it is showing regional wall motion abnormalities left and right side wall motion abnormalities is what see you have heart right i showed you the heart i mean uh, like this the structure like this which has the you know uh, four parts and this artery is going to the right side uh, sorry this artery is going to the right side this artery is going to the left side and because this is bringing the blood to right side this is bringing the blood to left side and what happens is now there is some blocks okay and there are some blocks and blood supply is lesser to the right side and left side so the movements movements means what movements means relaxation and relaxation and relaxation and what else what else guys what happens in the you know wall of the heart to make the you know lv's pump what happens relaxation and contraction so the contraction and relaxation are less so regional wall motion abnormalities are there i mean in the regions wall of the heart is not in the motion perfectly it is something there is abnormal so abnormal wall motion is shown in echocardiogram in the different regions left and right side we don't know what exactly the reason is but reason means what exactly the cause is but there is regional wall motion abnormalities other blood test we did hb is 9.2 definitely because he was showing failure right tlc normal rbc normal serum creatinine has raised again to 1.9 okay again to 1.9 right now these are the tests now what should else be done guys what next to be done guys from youtube also my question is to all of you what next should be done people from youtube and here guys what next should be done anyone anyone here hb1c is done right that was 7.9 i believe echo is done here this is echo arun this is echo treatment oh god perfectly fine manish treatment without the diagnosis do you have the complete diagnosis prothrombin time oh no come on guys put a little brain that's all coronary angiogram chaitanya absolutely angiogram we have to do angiogram right so look at this this was echocardiogram though i mean sorry uh, uh, echocardiogram so regional wall motion abnormalities and this is the angiogram this is the angiogram what i showed this is the real time patient's angiogram see look at this this is rca this is rca this is see as i told you this is lmca from here to here this is then the lad this is then the d1 om and lcx major which was going down right and here rca see from here to here guys look at this very carefully here to here the blood flow you will see is completely circumferential completely it is there right completely it is there i'm telling you it is complete here 100% but if you look at this here it is just like maybe 20% other than that everything is coming under the block okay everything which is white white here which is white white it is not a blood flow blood flow is like this black is part okay so here if you see i'll tell i'll show you again if you see here the part here is like it is just this much blood flow only this much blood flow okay this might be 20% or 30% that's all nothing else okay 
similarly if you look at in the lmca lmca here also it is looking like similar it is looking like you won't make it much difference but the dark color has gone here the dark color has gone here okay the dark color has gone here so lmca is also blocked here and if you look at the you know led here led here is also blocked here from here it is 100% here here it is 100% like okay here it is 100% here is it 100% but here again it is maybe 20% 30% we cannot make it out and see if you look at the diagonal 100% gone you look at the om maybe a little here lcx is also you know showing no 100% blood flow here right so multiple things are there multiple things you can see in the right side and left side of coronary angiogram images here you can understand completely okay here you can understand completely like see this must be like this right this must be like this but this is not like this this is like only 20 percent you know restricted blood flow restricted blood flow right so you can easily make out in the angiogram also now next part is when everything is done what is the final diagnosis guys what is the final diagnosis based on all the diagnosis based on all the uh you know laboratorial investigations history everything what is the final diagnosis to the patient guys tell me now i'm looking for you i have taught a lot i'm looking for you guys now tell me <clears throat> sir pt to check if pca procedure can be done no need no need exactly pt cannot pt is not necessary to check for the pca procedure okay first is okay people are telling guys tell me ihd with anistomy right okay then what else anistomy what else guys mm -hmm. okay uh dyslipidemia then anemia okay anemia i'll write here aki i'll write here diabetes mellitus i'll write here this i'll write here what else hypertension how can you forget hypertension guys hypertension i'll write here so let's see what is the final diagnosis dyslipidemia hypertension acute coronary syndrome okay acute coronary syndrome acute coronary syndrome with LMCA, I told you only 10 to 20% are there. 88% LMCA, RCA 76%, LCX 55%. Okay, so double vessel disease, anstomy, acute coronary syndrome, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and then anemia. It could be iron deficiency or hemolytic. Further evaluations are needed. Okay, then contrast induced nephropathy. Can you tell me why contrast induced nephropathy and what is contrast induced nephropathy? 1.3 to 1.9 after CAG. Okay, so when we do coronary angiogram or we do PTCA, what usually we give? We give contrast, we give dye to the patient. Okay, we put dye in the patient and kidney takes a lot of stress while passing out the dye from the body. Okay, passing out the dye from the body. So creatinine raises in certain cases that is called as contrast induced nephropathy, CIN. Okay, this condition is called as CIN, contrast induced nephropathy. So, creatinine increases in such cases, right? Now, we have missed something here. First, we have missed diabetes mellitus, right? Diabetes mellitus. Remember, remember this, guys, remember this. Okay, diabetes, diabetes mellitus, and then what we have missed here? It is reversible. Yes, CIN is reversible. It takes 10, 15, 20 days, or maybe immediately do one. Uh, dialysis it will be gone okay not uh, it is reversible the cin is reversible 100 percent reversible okay yeah so what else we missed here what else we missed here yeah diabetes mellitus newly diagnosed okay what else we missed here we missed here ischemic what we missed here guys ischemic heart failure okay ischemic heart failure why the Hemoglobin, I mean, this anti-proven P was more than 1,000, no? 1,090 or something. 
right it was because of the ischemia it was none other than because of the ischemia it has happened because of the ischemia it was not the heart failure exactly it was because of the ischemia ischemia has happened so that raises the anti pro bnp okay that raises the anti pro bnp and let me tell you echocardiogram ef was normal for this patient so this heart failure was just related to the ischemia we call it ischemic heart failure this is a heart failure but ischemic heart failure understand understand guys still here any questions okay yeah guys still now any questions from uh, your side any questions yes guys no okay if no questions now guys i'll ask you now let me ask you that what are what are the what are the differential diagnosis if it is not the if it is not the mi what else it could be because with, with these symptoms with these symptoms what it could be what it could be what it could be sir are ihd and ihf are synonym not at all heart failure and ischemic heart disease ischemic heart disease means ischemia okay heart failure is pumping capacity coming down okay those are totally different ischemia ischemic heart failure is heart failure because of ischemia ischemic heart disease is ischemia itself okay <clears throat> heart failure is totally different thing like when the pumping capacity of the heart ejection fraction comes down is called heart failure in heart in heart attack or ihd or acs that means the oxygen supply has reduced because of the high demand or the blockage in the coronary artery okay yes guys differential diagnosis for this patient what is differential diagnosis mean tell me first what is the mean of differential diagnosis differential diagnosis means when the other disease mimic the one okay like something is mimicking something else right something is mimicking something else so the diseases which mimic the symptoms no other possibility lipid profile was done lipid profile was done just well okay yes guys what is the differential diagnosis here okay now let me make it very clear if a patient you are the doctor in uh, you know a rural or wherever you are the doctor and a patient with gastric pain with the pain in the chest or burning sensation in the pain i let me tell let me reframe my question if some you are sitting in your clinic okay if some person comes with burning sensation in chest okay and he is telling sir something like pin is pinching in my heart in my heart and i am having difficulty in taking breath difficulty in breathing okay what it could be what would you diagnose what would you diagnose what would you diagnose asthma gerd that's that's what i'm asking that's what i'm asking guys that's what i'm asking it could be acute coronary syndrome it could be gerd you know gastrointestinal reflux reflux disease it could be peptic disease it could be severe gastritis it could be asthma it could be copd it could be anything right so same thing i'm asking the differential diagnosis means when the symptoms mimic for multiple diseases and we check we have to check like what exactly the problem is as we check with troponin t angiogram ecg echo so we are confirmed now this was mi but what else it could be what else differential diagnosis it could be okay so let's see it could be acute gastritis acute it could be acute mitral regurgitation it could be acute arterial dissection or aortic stenosis it could be anxiety disorder anxiety disorder mimics the same symptom of breathing i mean difficult breathing difficulty or the burning sensation or the chest pain jaw pain back pain headache it mimics the exact symptoms anxiety severe anxiety and stress disorders 
also mimic the symptom. Infective endocarditis, myocarditis, pericarditis, pneumothorax. These all were the differential diagnosis. These all were the differential diagnosis in this case. Okay. Now, what is SOAP analysis? You all, PAMDs and all people who present the paper, I mean, present the cases, they all follow the SOAP analysis. So, subjective, sign and symptoms, done. Objectives, medical history, medication history, family history, done. And assessment, lab investigations, imaging, radiology, done. Then, problem list. Problem list means the final diagnosis we did. Now, the P also involves planning here. What is the planning or management which is the important part now if you're preparing the stop analysis then it comes in the soap and f f is what here f is follow up okay so we always go for soap plus f analysis okay so plus f analysis so we are doing the case ka soap and f analysis right so now we have to talk about planning and management risk factors learning point four I mean, we are covering and uh, we are understanding the entire myocardial infarction. So, tell me, guys, what could be the risk factors for myocardial infarction? Yes. What is pneumothorax? Pneumothorax is a, like kind of infection. Sometimes it is the infection and it causes the similar problems like pulmonary edema. Okay. Okay. Hyperlipidemia, family history. I'll tell pneumothorax later, guys. No worries. Hypertension, family history, hypertension, pre-existing comorbidities, family history, diabetes, hypertension, sedentary lifestyle, age-related, okay, diabetes, okay. So these are the you, I mean you all know, hypertension, diabetes, smoking, alcohol intake, tobacco chewing, hyperlipidemia or dyslipidemia, family history, respiratory problems, injuries, blunt injuries, digestive problems, neurological problems, infections, gender, anemia, age. These could be the, like, these all are the major risk factors. These are the minor risk factors for the heart attacks or myocardial infarction. Okay. Sedentary lifestyle injuries, smoking, stress. These are the major and minor risk factors. Now, let's come to the initial treatment. Immediate after provisional diagnosis. Immediate after provisional diagnosis, what we started? We started these drugs. We started these drugs. Okay, guys, let me tell you, or you will tell me why and what. You have to tell me one by one why it was given. Okay, antiplatelet therapy, statin therapy, aspirin, antiplatelet therapy. Okay, aspirin and ticagalor are DAPT. Absolutely right. What is DAPT full form? Dual anti platelet therapy therapy dual anti platelet therapy dept dept we call it okay so dapt what does the dapt do aspirin and clopidogrel these stops the platelet aggregation aggregation how how it you know because aspirin and ticagalor these goes and attach to the attached to the platelets receptors and they leave no space for the Wilbrand factors, von Wilbrand factors, you know, glycoproteins and uh, collagens. They don't leave that. They don't leave that. Okay. They don't leave such, uh, you know, receptors to fill by the components, right? So that's it. Oh, yo, what happened? One sec, guys. I think something. One sec, I'm saving the slides again. Yes, here is the slides. Okay, here are the slides, guys. Okay, so all the drugs here, 
okay all the drugs here right all the drugs here why these drugs are being given aspirin okay antiplatelet clopidogrel antiplatelet what is clopidogrel here did i write clopidogrel here okay atorvastatin in hyperlipidemia absolutely now yes so see ticaglor is the drug okay which is the higher version i mean the next class of clopidogrel in the dapt 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 there are two things one is cox inhibitor okay one is cox inhibitor one is what one is another thing is p2 y12 inhibitors okay p2 y12 inhibitors so cox inhibitor is only one till now cox inhibitor is only one aspirin p2 y2 inhibitors there are first generation second generation first generation is clopidogrel okay second generation is prostugrel okay and i mean most used and third generation is now ticagrelor okay tica uh, grelor okay so these are the new generation drugs the p2 vital limiters and these two combines and make dapt dual antiplatelet therapy dual antiplatelet therapy okay and now acetyl cysteine 600 mg 1 to 2 tablets is that okay they have written acetyl cysteine why acetyl cysteine is given here yes Prasugrel, 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 second generation name is Prasugrel, okay, if you read, first is Clopidogrel, sorry, Clopidogrel, then Prasugrel, then Ticagrel, I mean there are uh, Ticagrel, okay, Ticagrel, now there is Cangrel also, like that is similar to Ticagrelor, Cangrelor, okay, but not being used in India right now much, okay, so, yeah, mucolytic agent, acetyl cysteine is to reduce the inflammation and on, it is mucolytic treatment we usually have given, right, now guys, can you look at these doses, tell me about the doses, yes guys, why aspirin is given 325 mg? Why ticagrelor is given 180 mg? Why atorvastatin is 40 mg? Why at cysteine 600 mg? Tell me, guys. What is this? Not CIN. Not to prevent the CIN. Mucolytic is not to prevent the CIN, but to reduce the gastroinfluxes. To reduce the gastric influxes during the procedure. That's why we give acetyl cysteine. Okay, gastric influxes. Yes, guys, tell me what is the reason? Yes, what is the reason of this? Why 180 mg? Why 320 mg? What is the dose of aspirin? Tell me what is the dose, normal dose of aspirin? Fast, fast, guys, we have to finish it early. What is the normal dose of aspirin? Okay. <coughs> what is the normal dose of aspirin? 75 mg. 75 mg. Absolutely, 75 mg. 75 mg. Okay. Then why we are giving 325 mg? Why we are giving 20, 325 mg? 325 is the loading dose, not the gender variation. Initial dose. Yes, it is loading dose. Okay, that is called as loading dose. So, to immediately get, achieve the half life. Okay, half life of the drug inside the body, we give the high dose of the drugs like aspirin we are giving 325 mg ticagrelor we are giving 180 mg usual dose is 90 mg okay one time and atorvastatin we usually give 10 to 20 mg but here we are giving 40 mg to achieve the you know peak in the blood right acetyl cysteine one to two tablets we are giving to you know stop the gastric influx during the procedure now the major question here comes says okay the major question comes here is if you are giving these things if you are giving these things to the patient immediately after hospitalization why we are giving these things what is our next purpose why we are giving the loading dose yes guys 
why we are giving the loading dose. Peak plasma sudden action to reduce the critical condition of the patient to achieve the MEC to prevent further complications exactly. So here is to prevent the reoccurrence of the event. To prevent the reoccurrence of the event. Okay, to prevent the reoccurrence of the event, we give and to achieve the peak plasma level of the drug, we give these, you know, drugs in the high dose. Okay, and the main part is along with these, we have given, along with these, we have given UFH 400 international unit, one injection, one IV now. Why? And what is UFH, guys? See, I'm asking a lot of questions to you. I can tell you, but I want to know. I want you to understand the things. Anticoagulant. Is it anticoagulant? Anticoagulant. Yes. It is unfractionated heparin anticoagulant. But why we are giving? <clears throat> why we are giving? Why we are giving anticoagulant? We are giving the antiplatelets. Anticoagulant, why it is needed? To prevent the formation of blood clot. To avoid clotting. Perfectly fine. To dissolve the possible clot. Oh, is it? Heparin can dissolve the possible clots? Is it? Not at all. Come on. Heparin never dissolves. That is TPAs. Transmenosin, plasmino, I mean, what is that? TPAs. Okay. TPAs are helpful in dissolving the clots, not heparin. Guys, anyone can, me, can answer why we are giving the UFH here. To avoid the clotting. Why to avoid the clotting? Someone is answering. Random word is answering in the YouTube. But why? To avoid clot right now. DVDs. Okay. There is no DVT. Guys, come on. Very simple answer because the patient has to go for CAG. Patient has to go for CAG. Right? Immediate after provisional. This was initial treatment. Patient has to go for CAG. So, IUFH is given pre-procedural. Okay, and not only this, sometimes peri-procedural. If the procedure is more than 20 minutes long, we give, do you know, again, we give UFH 400 units every 20 minutes until the procedure is completed. That is called peri-procedural. So, this is a profile access to avoid the clotting during the procedure. You understand that? This is pre-procedural and peri-procedural to maintain the proper, proper blood flow or to prevent the clotting during the clotting during the procedure. This is called as pre-procedural or peri-procedural prophylactic, prophylactic drug. Understand? Pre-procedural or peri-procedural. Peri-procedural means during the procedure. When we give those drugs, that is called as, that is called as the prophylaxis. Okay. And now the patient already was on bisoprolol 5-MG, but as the BP was very high, I think 168 by 96, so we gave enalapril also. We gave beta blockers plus, plus what is this? Enalapril is what drug category, guys? ACE inhibitors. Okay. Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. Antihypertensive agent, absolutely, but ACE inhibitors. Okay. Understand? Now, this is the treatment algorithm. I think last two, three more slides are there, guys. Treatment algorithm for an STEMI. This is being taken from ESC guidelines, you know, European Society of Cardiology. So first, let's make a diagnosis of anistomy by what? By ECG, drop T, and CAG. If there is anistomy, then go for aspirin 75 to 100 or 300 to 25 as STAT. Like this is the STAT dose, 300 to 325 STAT. Okay, guys, my question, I forgot actually that time. I have to ask you. I will write one term here. What is this? And what is the exact dose of aspirin here? Baby aspirin. What is baby aspirin? Yes, guys, baby aspirin. Baby aspirin. <coughs> baby aspirin is how much, guys? Baby aspirin. Everyone, baby aspirin. Less dose. How much less dose, Manish? 75? 81 mg. 81 mg is called as baby aspirin. 
okay 81 mg not 75 75 is the indian dose and international dose but in u a i mean in middle east okay in middle east usually and usa sometimes in some of the places in usa also they used it they use 81 mg of aspirin instead of 75 mg they call it baby aspirin they call it baby aspirin okay that is for like this is not the loading dose this is the maintenance dose this is the daily dose 81 mg okay 81 mg right okay so give aspirin start first all the doses and if contraindicated indicated then don't give otherwise give the dose and then assess the risk factors of cardiovascular problems if there are low risk of the cardiovascular problems or bleeding then what used to do give clopidogrel along with the aspirin give clopidogrel 300 mg stat and you can you know evaluate the patient further by angiography and you can go for the conservative management conservative management with which means conservative management with if the coronary angiography is uh, i mean okay i think we missed one step so first the patient give aspirin then assess for the cardiovascular problems and the bleeding risk okay if the lower risk then start the conservative management conservative management means the drugs aspirin clopidogrel and all maintenance dose if there is a little higher then give the clopidogrel and assess for the symptoms if there is a functional test positive like if it was stable angina maybe and, and now is an ischemy if the functional test like stress test was positive then go for angiography if the stress test is normal then negative then go for conservative management means the drugs you know dept and uh, you know the uh, what we say atorvastatin like the statins and <clears throat> then some pantocid or something we can give that is conservative treatment okay but if the angiogram says something else angiogram comes up with some blockage then go for coronary angioplasty then go for revascularization or angioplasty okay in case of moderate risk and high risk always start with clopidogrel along with you know uh, like that is 300 is stat again for clopidogrel 75 mg is daily for 12 months and ticagrelor maybe clopidogrel or ticagrelor or prasugrel as i told these all are the drugs in the same category then you know add uh, some you know we can start some you know glycoprotein 2b3 inhibitors also and then assess the angiogram and angiogram shows if the angiogram shows you know very high risk then go for the pci under 2 hours if a high risk with grace score more than 140 that's the score then pci we can go ahead and then we have to follow up the patient if there are more than two vessels involved we can consider cabg also along with, if the pci is not you know feasible in such cases we can go for cabg also cabg is coronary coronary artery bypass graft okay coronary artery bypass graft okay we can consider that also that is the thing guys you 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 know put here we did not put any diabetic medication here that was the that was coming to the coming to what that was coming to your prescription audit we missed the diabetic medication we missed the diabetic diagnosis initially we missed then diagnosis medications also right so it is very important to remember that what is missed here right so diabetes medication was missed here okay now learning point 5 is what are the thrombolytics okay like thrombolytics are clot busters and which are breaking the clots which are breaking the clots like what like what tpas plasminogen activators right tissue plasminogen activators what are the examples of tissue plasminogen activators guys our oh, anemic condition was not given any drug it will improve after some time maybe we can assess again what type of anemia it was hemolytic or you know vitamin deficient streptokinase streptokinase urokinase many drugs are there in tpa so thrombolytics are tpas which breaks the clots are called as tissue plasminogen activators not the uh or not the anticoagulants okay guys anticoagulants never break up the clots remember anticoagulants never break up the uh, the clot anticoagulants are preventing the clot formation they never break up the already made 
uh, you know uh, plaques or you know the clots okay for this we have tpas or thrombolytics we call them okay and thrombolytics are being used in myocardial infarction also pulmonary embolism ischemic stroke thrombo thrombosis of prosthetic heart valve and stents now tell me one thing guys if we have the tpas why didn't we use tpa in this patient why didn't we use tpa in this patient and what are the criteria to use tpas tell me what are the criteria to use tpas guys tell me can someone tell me why we did not use the tpas here and what are the criteria to use tpas yes anyone anyone don't know time frame exactly see if you feel the patient got mi it is confirmed with ecg and troponin t right ecg and troponin i or troponin t if it is if it is confirmed and you feel that tertiary care center is more than 2 hours or more than 4 hours away okay and patient is in the severe risk of getting uh, i mean severe risk of death or cardiac arrest then what usually in the primary care centers do they give tpa they give tpa okay in like where you feel like patient will not reach the tertiary care hospital for angiogram or ptca within 6 to 8 hours then we give tpa then we give tpa so patient will be now easily patient can easily reach the hospital 6 uh, hours 10 hours a day and then they can go ahead the further process if it is needed okay so tpa timelines are very very important within the golden period mi we can like give the tpas understand so usually some people says that within 2 hours i mean when we feel like 6 to 8 hours are you know uh, uh, there to reach the main hospital or to reach the tertiary care hospital then we have to follow such things okay tpas now the thing is guys okay so these are the you know tpas example now the management here is guys now the management here is this now your major part has come last two slides prescriptions prescriptions audit now tell me what is wrong here this we have done many time no nitroglycerin we cannot give nitroglycerin is just the you know uh, what we say a vasodilator nitroglycerin is vasodilator and can help in the symptoms but not for that much and when we are very much aware that the patient got the acute coronary syndrome we should not use uh, you know nitroglycerin to stop that okay so first equosprin 75010 perfectly fine enalapril enalapril spelling is mistake first of all okay i'll not take time i'll not ask you guys because we are late right enalapril 5 mg 101 must be there ticagrelor dose must be 90 mg 0 90 mg not 90 180 mg because ticagrelor highest dose is 180 mg per day okay frusilac ds is why we have given frusilac ds here why we have given frusilac ds here yes guys frusilac ds we have given just for the prophylaxis or just to control the ischemic heart failure ischemic heart failure was there na so to resolve the symptoms of ischemic heart failure frusilac ds was given what is frusilac ds composition guys frusilac ds composition furosemide absolutely is it is it spironolactone also frusilac ds is spironolactone also right is it guys is it frusilac ds is spironolactone also i didn't know that <laughs> yes guys frusilac ds has spironolactone or not tell me frusilac ds frusilac ds has spironolactone not okay frusilac ds has frusilac ds is furosemide and spironolactone okay frusilac ds is furosemide and spironolactone and dose is what 40 plus 50 40 plus 50 mg understand that 
फोर्टी प्लस फिफ्टी एम जी फोर्टी फोर्टी प्लस फिफ्टी एम जी फिफ्टी एम जी राइट सो इट वॉज गिवन फॉर आई एच एफ अटोर वाइज स्टेटिन इज मस्ट बी गिवन इन द नाइट Why must be given in the night? I think you have talked in, we have talked in Neffeld class. Uh, statins are most worked in the night when the lipid synthesis is the highest in the midnights, right? Metoprolol twenty five mg, okay. Clexin, omeprazole, yes, guys. Atorvastatin twenty zero zero one, okay, perfectly fine. DVT prophylaxis, Clexin here, DVT prophylaxis. Yes, guys. Omeprazole, okay. Zero, 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 one before the food. Okay. Why Clexin? Clexin could be given during the hospital during the procedure. Okay. Clexin could be given the due could be given during the procedure, but not after procedure. Every twelve hours is not recommended at all. Okay. In such cases, and day one to day three, so not at all. It was just. You can write SOS if it is needed. SOS during the procedure, okay? During the procedure, but not every time, okay? Did you guys done with the prescription audit? Anything else you want to remind here? Omeprazole is before breakfast, okay? What is that? What else is remaining, guys? Is done? Are you done, guys, with the prescription audit? Diabetes drugs, guys. Diabetes drug. Who will write? Metformin here, metformin five hundred mg one zero zero or whatever. Like diabetic drugs are missed here. Okay, diabetic drugs are missed here. So that is the blunder called. This blunder is called as indication without drug. Indication without drug. Indication without drug. Indication without drug. Clexin was drug without indication. Clexin here was drug without indication. There is no indication for example for the clexin. There is no indication for the anaxaparin. So it was drug without indication, and there is diabetes which is indication without drug. Indication without drug. Understand? So these are the important parts. Okay, these are the important parts you must remember. Okay. So PTCA with DS was done for to. You know, uh, remove the blocks of LMCA and RCA, right? Now, drug without indication was there. Indication without drug was there. Comorbidities was there. Doses, forms, medication errors, dose frequency, additional instructions, major adverse effect. Everything was remember. You know, was to remember here. You know, in the uh, last chart. Now, right, right, guys. We missed something else also here. I want to, you know, bring to your notice. What could be the possible drug drug interactions here? What could be the possible drug drug interactions here, guys? Tell me. Yes. Why statins given in the night to reduce the cholesterol synthesis in the night? Yes, HMG cognis is highly active in the night. Yes. What is the? What do you think is the possible drug drug interactions here, guys? See, first of all, clexane is drug without indication. Then clexane and ticagrelor and aspirin can raise the bleeding risk, very high bleeding risk. This is the major side effect. Omeprazole does not go with the P. Uh, you know, sorry, omeprazole does not go with the P two Y twelve inhibitors. Omeprazole does not go with the ticagrelor or clopidogrel usually. It is the it is the prohibited thing usually. It does not go with the P2 Y12 inhibitors. Okay, bleeding risk. So omeprazole also cannot go with the ticagrelor. Okay. Now keep in mind we kept in mind doses form everything we collected and risk benefit ratio assessment discharge planning socioeconomic status of the patient you have to keep in mind. You should not give the highly you know uh, costly medications to the patient so they cannot afford and they can leave in between so they should not leave the anti platelet drugs in between otherwise they can get the higher chances they will be in the higher chances of getting the reoccurrence of the problems okay then bleeding risk definitely and side effect profiles polypharmacy don't give multiple drugs combine 
usually nowadays statins and you know uh, aspirin and uh, you know clopidogrel all comes together we can change to the you know the combination drugs okay we can give it to combined drugs and we should avoid these such things patient counseling definitely about the disease condition medication side effects medication readiness i could have take it better but i think we are done now and uh, we are running this show for more than around 2 hours now guys right so yeah and these are the references esc guidelines acc aha guidelines last so with that guys thank you very much and now you can ask me the questions yes guys questions now you can ask me the questions and anemic medications not given because anemia was not confirmed what exactly the anemia is maybe because of the vitamin deficiency or maybe because of the hemolytic hemolysis hemodialytic anemia so we need more uh, you know evaluations of the anemia and then we could give the medications to so further uh, follow ups the things can be done how to check drug interaction we have drug interaction checking websites we have the micromedics uh, software um in the application for the mobiles nowadays micromedics is available for the students lexicomp is there medscape is there but micromedics is the best thing and you can buy the micromedics for 139 rupees per month uh you know with the subscriptions you just have to pay 139 rupees per month for one mobile subscription for micromedics you can buy it okay why clopidogrel was not given clopidogrel was not given because clopidogrel has uh the higher bleeding profile than the ticagrelor and ticagrelor is the newest generation drug and the or, the major differences are also there see clopidogrel is the irreversible binding with the platelets like when the clopidogrel binds to the platelet with their you know surface and receptors it never detach it never detach from the platelet so till the platelet dies it is there with the platelet clopidogrel right so after the clopidogrel attaches to the platelet the platelet has no life and it will not work again in the healing process okay then the clopidogrel uh, you know is not uh, i mean useful in such cases but what happened with ticagrelor ticagrelor is reversible binding so it it binds to the platelet until the process is complete you know until the process is complete means for the 24 hours and 72 hours usually 24 hours to the 72 hours in that case you know the platelets will be reusable again you know recycling of the platelets ticagrelor helps in recycling of the platelets and if something happens ticagrelor works in that case okay ticagrelor is reversible binding with the platelets clopidogrel is no blood uh, no reversible binding and that's why it has the high bleeding risk what are the drug food interaction okay grape fruit is not at all recommended with the p2 white well inhibitors and you know the cox inhibitors as well who will tell me the grape fruit if i tell tell grape fruit juice what is grape fruit grape fruit juice is the grapes or what guys why ufh is preferred over lm wh ufh or lm wh anything can be given okay anything can be given but usually ufh unfractionated heparin we give sir in all prescriptions i see am set normally for more than five drugs that is polypharmacy it's not necessary what the difference between thrombus and embolus very important thing see thrombus says like when the big clot or big you know block has been broken into multiple parts that is the thrombus but embolus is embolus is starting from that part embolus is not you know generated from the breakage of some big block embolus is like they are generated there i mean the clots are made in the flowing in the circulation only embolus is the clots are made in the flowing blood only in the circulation only those have not come from the breakage of something else okay those are made in the like in the circulation only with the platelet in platelet aggregation and all those have made in the circulation only that is called embolus and thrombus is like the part of our thrombus part of our clot uh, and after breaking up those are like thrombus are usually big part embolus are usually very short part okay very small part 
okay embolosis can even run through the small capillaries but thrombus will not uh, you know cannot enter the small capillaries that is the major another difference okay yes not the grape not the grape it's not grapes it's not grapes not grapes grape fruit is different from grapes it's separate fruit yes it is a kind of mosambi or orange but the big one okay i defined it like that available in the south region yes available in the south region citrus it is a citrus fruit yellow color citrus fruit absolutely correct what are the goals of therapy in these patients goals of therapy nice question but the, there is no feedback from guys not necessary i told you in the, in the class even in the interns not necessary to take the attendance feedback form is okay uh, feedback forms we'll say later it's not necessary okay so the thing is goals of therapy goals of therapy is to you know first of all to alleviate the symptoms and to prevent the further occurrence of the disease and then to remove the clot to improve the lifestyle modifications to improve the lifestyle or health related quality of life of the patient and then we give the medications to prevent the reoccurrence of the myocardial infarction understand and definitely reduce the mortality and morbidity you can write your the uh, feedback here only okay guys so thank you very much it's almost 9 and uh, uh take care see you thank you very much for attending this class and your okay you want certificate right so um, you can wait for a minute you can just wait for a minute guys just wait for a minute i'm sharing the feedback for my prepared the feedback just yes 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 i'm preparing the feed i'm, I'm sharing the feedback guys